All right, so here's the plan. I'm gonna grab my sketchbook. I'm gonna open said sketchbook and I'm gonna draw cute little fruity rodents. So let's jump right into it. Lately, I've really been using art for like de-stressing. I mean, name something in the world right now that's not stressful. I'll wait. No, I won't because I will be waiting forever. So <laughs> the form of art that really helps me really de-stress is like when I don't have to focus on being all that creative, I kind of just recreate. So instead of create, I recreate. So like always, I've collected a bunch of references of little things I'd like to recreate. I really want to like play up the colors and like the gradients of the fur. I guess we'll just pick one and uh, go for it. I like the ones that have patterns and their fur. There's just so many options. And since these are things that I don't draw that often, it's going to help expand, excuse me. It's going to help expand my shape vocabulary by drawing new things. So I think I want to start with this one because it is what kind of inspired this whole thing and my desire to draw these. These. Let's grab a Coleray's pencil. Since this is like a warm colored squirrel, I think I'll start with my rose colored pencil. It probably would be smart to use like an orange or a red. But my options right now are rose or purple. This one's cooler, this one's warmer. I'll go with the warm one, if you don't mind. So basically what I'm gonna do is try and break it down into simpler shapes. So we have like the big, the biggest shape is like sort of like an oval right here, which kind of includes the knee and it kind of flattens at the bottom. Then you have an extra section here, which is like the torso with the arm kind of coming out this way. This actually kind of comes up higher now that I have the torso drawn in. I can uh, relate the shapes back and forth and see that this one needs to kind of come up higher. And the head is over here and it kind of comes upwards, rounds off, and there's a bit of a point. I could probably use a circle here. It looks like the head's actually kind of tilted a little towards the camera. So we can maybe add like a little shape there. Kind of find the nuzzle, nuzzle, nozzle, nuzzle, nuzzle, the tip of the face. And the eye is about here. Kind of like find the shape of that a little later. Then there's an ear that kind of comes out from here, kind of curls around. And then there's the ear in the back. I feel like my head is smaller than that one. I might just try and expand that a little bit more. Kind of just draw a bigger like reference circle for the head. Kind of play it off from there. And there's like the big cheek that kind of like bulges right here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This little area is tricky. You know what might be helpful? Is drawing like a shape like that. So it's like his cheeks and the eyes here, nose is here. This is all gonna be kind of fuzzy. And that's where the arm kind of is visible. And the ear actually comes from right where this cheek ends. Now that I've drawn that shape, I can see that. I really apologize for the dog. It's going through this phase where eating has to be entertaining. <laughs> so that's kind of the eyeball. Something still feels really off about this area. Throw the ear back in here. Maybe. <laughs> what do you think? I think my torso is either too short or too long. And for some reason I cannot figure out which one that is. I always kind of exaggerate the shapes a little more. So this is actually the knee. Then there's a tail, kind of comes down this way. And a little foot with a little claws. Then you have the hair coming from the tail. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of like just gauging the direction of the fur and adding little guideline guidelines for when I get around to coloring this. So these are little short hairs. There's actually whiskies or whiskers as they're more commonly known. And then I'm really fascinated by the feet and the hands. They're so cute. They look like, like little furry human appendages, to be honest. I think the sh elbow actually goes to around there. Hey, this is looking a lot better already. Actually, this never really looked that bad. I don't know if he's holding anything, but I think I'll just draw what I can see. Try and break that down into some shapes. Something like that. Now, I think the last thing to do is I'm just gonna add little shadows where there's shadows. Kinda remember that moving forward. I don't know if I'll end up keeping a lot of shadows. I do really wanna play with colors and especially like the tonality of like the fur. So adding shading will just be an extra bonus if I get to it. Definitely exaggerated this little bump back here. Oh well, I like it. I like it as it is. I might actually just curl the tail just to make it fit into the sketchbook find the direction the fur might be going. Just to plan ahead. Sitting on like a branch of some form. Block that shape in. Keep it really wiggly if you want it to look like an organic branch. All right, I think that's gonna be it for the branch. I kinda don't wanna color it, it looks so easy to ruin. We'll put it that way. <laughs> but that was kinda the goal was to do the colors. So I think what I'll grab first is, I think they call it the Who Skin Tone Set, but it's basically just earth tones. Hopefully this is it. Please. Have I never swatched these? One second. 
seriously, do you see how well this is gonna work for the things I wanna draw today? I've learned my lessons from when I did the floral and I will put this behind here so I don't bleed through pages in case a marker explodes. All right, so looking at this, I think terracotta is gonna be good. Now that one's actually in another set. That's not exclusive. I'm thinking for some of these shadows, natural oak or burnt sienna or even mahogany, any of those. And then I want some lighter areas for highlights. I'm thinking this warm gray zero. Actually, it's 0 0.5. It would be cool if it was a little yellower. So maybe I'll grab YR20. Now I'm going to swatch these in the ELO sketchbook. I always like to do circles. Alrighty. I wonder if we could start the warm gray. I might also grab my kneaded eraser. It's kind of bring down the pink. Now I'm going in with our lightest squirrel tone, we'll call it. And I'm gonna kind of just fill in all the areas with the lightest tone of fur. And I'm gonna use like little brush strokes. Kind of pretend I'm painting in the fur. And there's like some rim highlights here. Tail's actually a lot lighter. I could almost just color that in with this. This is a good time to follow the strokes of the fur. That way if you like miss some spots, it's gonna look intentional layer over it in those same directions. That's a lot darker, but luckily we can go over it with darker markers. I can just kind of fill that in now. We'll find the shadows later. Now I'm gonna keep that lightest tone out and I'm gonna move in. <gasps> Why isn't the cap fitting on the other end? What is this? Oh, it's staying a little bit. <laughs> and then I'm gonna grab the next darkest, which is YR20. We'll decapitate both of those and uh, switch between them pretty quickly to make sure we're blending them out. So I'm just gonna go in the next darkest area continue with my first stroking plan. <laughs> Blend out where the seams would be of the two colors. Blend that out. See, this is what I find like so relaxing. It's like all that matters in the world right now, recreating this photo. Although saying that makes me think about the world and then it uh, kind of defeats the purpose, so I'll stop doing that. And then areas that are going to be even darker, like I can obviously layer it with the tone I'm using right now because we can layer it with something darker afterwards. So we just want to make sure we're not going over the areas that need to be lighter than this. This area is a little hard to visualize because there's going to be darker sections. Let's just kind of add some texture for now, maybe. Make it look like fur, I guess. Just following the direction of the fur with my strokes. I'm blending out with the lighter one. I think I'll just go over the whole thing like this. And then we'll go over with the next color once we're all done. Bit of a slow process. Dabble along the way. Blend out with the lighter tone. It kind of softens the darker colors. Now down here it's getting way darker. So I might just fill this little area in. And then we'll skip that for when we have the darker marker out. So I'll just jump down here. Always pay attention to which markers in which hands. You don't want to accidentally put down the wrong one. <laughs> Not quite sure how I'm gonna do the tail because it has such, I don't know if you can see like the reference kind of an interesting texture that might be difficult to recreate. All right, so now I'm gonna put away the lightest squirrel tone that we picked out. And I'm gonna to switch to the next darkest, which is that terracotta color, I believe. I'm gonna go back over what we've already did, done. <laughs> Just kind of make it more similar to my reference photo, I guess. This is also gonna warm it up a lot because this color is just significantly warmer. Actually, I might need the lighter one to blend that out even. If we don't want it to get too dark up there, keep these both out. How's that looking? Is that too much? Is it like too much contrast? Do I need to blend it out more with like this tone? Kind of wondering if these are just the wrong tones. Like this one's a lot cooler, so I can use that for the cooler areas. And this is a lot warmer, so I should be using it for the warmer areas. So maybe I do need to go ahead and color that in with what I already have. Not sure. We're just playing around, seeing what happens, I guess. Not quite looking the way I want it to, but that might just be the colors I have. I think what I just need to do is focus on making it as similar as I can. So this whole little area is completely in shadow, so I'm gonna just go in with this really saturated color, even though that's pretty desaturated. I'm gonna just block it out. I need something like this that's warmer. Do I have that? Reddish yellow, maybe. You know what? This might be it. Oh, hey. I could just use that cooler one. I kind of just desaturate it. Still trying to like follow the flow of the fur, but I keep forgetting. <laughs> I'm doing two broader strokes. So like the finer ones for the fur. Okay, definitely need to darken up the shadows still. Keep working on that. 
Not sure if this is very entertaining, but here's the progress so far. I don't know. Let's try that. Yeah, I'm a little nervous about the tail. Maybe if we just kind of like fade out of this color, kind of just making it more sparse as we go. Maybe more blended towards the center and it kind of like gets more sharp at the edge. This is flowing. Okay, now around the face, it looks like there's a lot more cooler tones. So I'm going to switch back to the more in color for that. That was not what I meant to do. I forgot. No! Whoa, 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 whoa! This is exactly what I said not to do. Oh well, I think we can play this off. But I do want the more in color. That is exactly what I wanted. Just didn't want the other one. Yeah, when you're doing this much blending, definitely recommend using some kind of protection for your bottom pages. Whether that's just drawing straight on your desk or whatnot. Now I have one more darker color. Originally I was going to use it for the shadow, but I'm kind of happy with what I've got going right now. So I'm going to first just try it for the blacks instead of actually using black. So like find the areas that are supposed to be the darkest. Kind of fill them in with this. Maybe do the eye with this. Because it's so dark you're not really going to be able to tell the difference between it and actual black. You could probably use this for the claws as well. I like to use the brush tip for most of the blending because you can kind of lift as you're blending so that you're blending some areas more than others. Let's see if we can lift it with this really lighter, much lighter marker. <laughs> Add in some final little furries. Really blend them out a little too. I don't really want to go any deeper with this. Kind of like the way it's looking. You know, even though it's obviously different from the reference, I'm kind of happy with the differences. Just kind of looking at them. Do I want to add like, oh, whiskeys. The whiskers. <laughs> I might grab, I have a brown, I think it's a Copic multi-liner. What size is this? 0.5? Oh, that's perfect. Little whiskers, maybe little details where I feel like they might be necessary. Maybe trace out the ear shape. Add a little texture around the edges. I'm not using like a black liner, which would be really harsh on this. I'm trying to be very soft with it. I'm not even like connecting all my lines. Just kind of giving it a fur texture where I feel like it just needs a little extra oomph, which isn't too many places. It's mostly around the face. Maybe the whiskers. And this foot needs something. Maybe use this for a little more dimension down here because I can get a much finer point with this than I can with the markers. Okay, I spent way longer on this than I had anticipated, but yee, I like it. Might want to add like that same sort of green background, but I think I'll use a pastel green for my speed. This guy. Just kind of like make the branch that I don't feel like coloring pop out. So we can kind of like follow along the edge of that. Just like for a little pop of another color. I think that looks great. I'm going to keep these colors out in case they're necessary for the next one, but I do want to draw something different this time. Let me pick something. I'm feeling like this little ducky could fit right here pretty well. Or we got like a gray bunny that would get out different colors. I think I want to do the duck. This time I'm going to draw it a little smaller. Try to kind of fit it right there. And uh, I'm going to try to be a little less defined with it. A little bit more globular. So there's a head here. Finding those shapes again. Doing basically the exact same thing. There's like a section of the neck here that looks separate from this section. And then there's like, it looks like the torso. And from there you can see the wings. And then the little booty. Try the head again. Oh, this is so different from like a squirrel's anatomy. I am confused already. The eye kind of like lines up with that line. You have a big curve of the head. This actually follows that way. That's already better. Sometimes it's like one line that's off and you can't quite place it. And then you just tweak one little thing and boom, so much better. Now I don't really have room for those adorable feet. Can we at least fit like one foot? So like one's coming out from here and one's over here. I might just have to wing it. I'm really happy with the way the head turned out. So I think we'll just go ahead and color that. Let's see if there's any of these that'll work. Might need the pastel set. And then I think I'm going to use a Copic marker. I have these two very light yellows. So I definitely want to try and erase as much pink as possible. I'm going to start with the lightest yellow. Kind of just go over the whole thing. Block out the shape essentially. Like a so. Okay, now I'm going to go in with the next darkest which is also extremely light. I'm kind of trying to find those little, what would you call those? Shadows almost? It's almost like sketching one layer at a time and slowly increasing the darkness. What is that value? Okay, let's go in with the next one. Do the same thing at first. Let's see if I need to change up my strategy. This is essentially just where I want it to be a little more saturated around the face, I think. I'm going to grab that cream color. 
This works really well for shading because it's like a desaturated version of what we've already been using and it's slightly darker. Blend that out. Now that's looking a little green in those areas so I want to bump up the saturation, warm up some of these areas. Still want it to be a little orangier. So I think I'm going to take that color that we used on the squirrel, throw it on there and then immediately blend it out. It's like looking kind of green. Let's use this for like the beak. And then we need a light reddish orange, I'd say, for the beak. Might need a little more dimension to it. Good for now. i use this to kind of just fill in this before I go over with the other color. Now I also want to add in the pupil. I'm gonna use that same brown multi-liner. Okay, why does it look so grumpy? I might just round it off for my own sanity. <laughs> this one might just need the liner all the way around because it is so light. All right, that one wasn't quite as fun. I think it's because it's like so light that I'm having a hard time like finding the details, but I also said I wanted to do it more blobby, but then I don't really like the head. That's the summary of my thoughts. They're all over the place. I might continue that same green color all the way up to this, just so that page looks a little more cohesive. Maybe we could do like a nice big one that fills the next page. We could do the raccoon. I also really want to do this. Should we do this? I think we should. I'm very interested in it right now. So if we're gonna fill it in this, too bad we couldn't have put them on this same branch. Let's just kind of break that branch off since it seems to be making its way into my space here. Tail's like there-ish. The body would be here. Let's just do the most basic shapes to make sure it'll fit. And then the head. Black out the shapes. I love the little ears. Kind of like using the softer shapes for this. And the eye kind of like ends up right there. If I can find these shapes, comes right out from under the arm. I did not quite leave enough room for the tail. Thought I took measures to avoid, but for some reason the brain just turned off there. Eyeball! I'm mistaken. There are five stripes on his back. This is one big one. And then this continues down the tail. Shoulder maybe ends a little further that way. With a little paw. And then there's like a branch. Looks kind of like a crab apple tree or something. That's a branch like this way. Again, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm not putting a lot of time into the way the branches look. Not to my interest at this point in time. Oh, there's a little like blueberry on here. Okay, the sketch is done. Now we add the color. I'm gonna try something different this time. Oh, <gasps> right. And I'm gonna start with the dark stripes. because That's the most interesting part to me. I think I will use the coolest dark brown we've got. Burnt Sienna. And we'll just draw those in first. I definitely can tell it's a little too warm, but we'll just go with it. Oh, that was supposed to be the stripe. Not this. That's the in-between area. Maybe I can kind of meet it at the end. You can tell I'm being like very broken with the shape because it's fur. This one goes all the way down. Boop, 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 boop. Ba -ba! Let's do the same thing on the face. And around the eye. And there's a thinner one right above the eye. Now from here, we need like a gray color. Maybe one of these two. And then also maybe this cooler color. I think what's important is that there's a mix of like warm and cool tones with this. Let's start with the cool one. Go over all the cooler areas. Makes sense, right? I'll just fill that in as like a base tone and then we'll add some texture probably afterwards. Between these. Like maybe the inside of the arm. That's all the white areas. Let's go in with. You know what? I really don't know. I don't feel like I have any of these colors. So we're just gonna see what happens. Should be more yellow, but try this. I can feel myself getting the lazies, which means we're getting close to needing to call it quits here. <laughs> Actually, we need something like this. It's almost like a gold color. I'm blending that out with what I was using before. Something like that. And then there's a little bit of that down here too. Here it's a little lighter, so maybe avoid that. Kind of blend it into these stripes. I'm gonna take this gray and kind of find the in-between parts of like the light areas and the warmer gray. I feel like my plan has some merit. We'll see. <laughs> okay, we need something darker. Just add some more depth in here. Actually, mine might even be darker than that. It also could be warmer. Do I have like a, like a warm gray? That's kind of an interesting effect. Maybe go over with the cool gray to get the texture and blend over it with the warmer one. Let's grab... I think I might need black for this one because there are so many darker colors. So I'm going to use a black fine liner net in the eye. Let's 
So I need something up in here. Ooh, it looks like a little badger or something. I think I might actually take this color. Blend that out. I think I need some texture. Yeah, the colors are way off, but I'm trying. I'm trying, I'm trying. Oh, I didn't move the... Ooh! Ugh, too late. Use the fine liner for the edges. Kind of outline it with like a fuzzy texture. Okay, I kind of like it. It's definitely a very different color scheme than I am accustomed to. I think I want to continue with our little green blobs. Kind of just make it pop a little. Maybe there's like trees or something back here that's green. Also, grab like a pastel blue maybe. Go over the top edge of it. Might be a little saturated, but it's cute. What do you think of my little chipmunk? I will have references linked down below if you want to draw from them yourself. This didn't really turn out the way I expected. I think I should have stuck to the fuzzy animals like my original plan. I don't like the duck. It looks weirdly middle-aged and a baby at the same time. Can't say I'm a fan. I just want to try and draw my own little fuzzy wuzzy. See if I kind of learned anything from drawing two of them. They have like the top torso and then the larger bottom. Maybe to make it a square so we get to draw a big tail. Kind of looks like a Pikachu. <laughs> Not too bad. I could draw it in a different angle. You've got me intrigued, funky squirrels. Eh? Eh? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I do want to thank you guys for watching and come along with me as I filled another spread in my sketchbook. Let me know what your favorite little tiny fuzzy animal is to draw. I think my favorite is the red squirrel. I think it turned out really, really well and I had a lot of fun with it and I feel like I really took my time with it and I think it shows. I really like that one. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!